Let's take a look at computing and displaying a signal's magnitude spectrum with the FFT, also called the Fast Fourier Transform. Look under the Signal Processing subpalette and you'll find the transforms. We'll grab the FFT. Let me turn on context help momentarily so we can see what we're looking at. We have an input array called X, an output array, and then we also need to specify the FFT size. Let me go ahead and create a constant right here. And I'm going to type in a value for efficient operation of 128. That's a power of 2. Look under signal processing again. And to illustrate the behavior of the FFT, I'm going to apply a sinusoidal waveform as the input array. Sine wave needs the number of samples needs an amplitude, and it needs a frequency. In particular, it really pays to always look at the LabVIEW help anytime you're dealing with frequency because sometimes it's normalized, as it is in this case, called cycles per sample. Other times the frequency will be in hertz, so you just really need to check the details. Let me create a numeric constant for the oscillation frequency of my sine wave. And then I'll make a copy of that, call that F sub S, and this will be my sampling frequency. I'll go with a value of 1000 for the sampling frequency and a value of 60 for the oscillation frequency. To get normalized frequency, I divide my desired oscillation frequency by the sampling frequency. And then connect that up to frequency. Now this value 128, I think later on I'll want to change that to other values, so let me drop that down here. Change that to a control. And then this value is also used to specify the number of samples to produce from the sine wave sub VI. Sub VI. All right, I'll use the sine wave output as the input to the FFT and then create the default numeric indicator for the FFT output. Go ahead and run that. See lots of values. And the thing I want to point out here is that these values are complex. I'd like to look at a special case of DC. This would be zero frequency. Now, I was expecting something to show up in the zero index entry there. What I really need is a cosine waveform. I need the, co I need the sinusoid to start at value 1 at time 0. All right, that looks good. We see that that DC value is exactly the same thing as the FFT size. What I'd like to do is pre-divide the FFT input value by the FFT size. I used the value 2 as a placeholder when I was attaching my array to the other side of divide, so that way I did not uh, inadvertently create a array constant. So I'll take out that temporary value and then connect that up to my FFT size. Good, we see the normalized value of 1 showing up in the DC position. Now it's common to look at the polar form of the complex value. And for this purpose, I will display the, the magnitude part as a graph. place the waveform graph, and then let's call that FFT magnitude, and down here this is frequency bin, or frequency bin number, or frequency index, whatever you like to call that. And let's see what we have. Alright, I see that single line, spectral line showing up at DC. 
I'm also going to set this up for a discrete spectrum display. Works a little better. All right, we see a nice spectral line showing up here. We see the characteristic spectral leakage lines showing up on, on the sides of the main line as well. You can see a little more detail here. We see that showing up at a particular frequency bin. Let's get this back to the full display. All right, the FFT size dictates the total number of samples in the array, but it's common to only display the lower half because the upper half is a mirror image of the lower half. We can do this with the array subset. We need to provide a length value, which is the FFT size divided by two. I'd like to change the representation to integer data type, go with I32, give that a value of two, and then connect that up to the FFT size. Let's see how we're doing. Good, this is showing the lower half of the array. Let's try doubling that to see if the spectral line jumps up. And sure enough, it does.